Hey everyone, and welcome back to Dracky Cup 2. We're gonna finish it off today. Yes, that only took two months. <laughs> uh, casting the finals. Now, um, it's always a great thing when you see a magpie lurking around your homeworld server and you think, ooh, he's, he's here. But it turns out what he did today actually was cast this very same final, so you may have already seen it before, but um, we'll just pretend you haven't, and we'll go for it. Wow, that was perfect timing. Wow, I wasn't even trying to do that. Come through loud and clear, right, A-game? Just tell me if anything's going wrong here. So, um, it's going to be between me and him, though. Probably one reason why he's already watching the stream. Uh... The climactic finals here. Of course, I did manage to beat the Scar in the semifinals. So that'll secure my position to the grand finals here. Gonna be a best of five series, which is always pretty fun to see. Um, playing Con F here, I, I did kind of want to prove a point with this. That's kind of the reason. This is not really my main faction. Um, but let me see. I have the info.txt5 right here. I believe I picked first because I'm lower seed, yeah? That should be the way things went down. Indeed it is, then A-game picks random, but of course he'll declare faction, because he's nice, I guess. <laughs> nice one. Classic. Um, but A-game's gonna ban Galsian Turret for his alternate. Gotta say, I think that makes a lot of sense against Con F. Those missiles just seem to be quite effective. We didn't see Descaro do that terribly well. Or, sorry, Catharsis do that terribly well in his game versus Descaro. But you get the idea. Um, the map being small like that means this Con F carrier being slower is not such a big dis uh, issue. Um, you can pressure very quickly with those cruise missiles. And also just a map that he doesn't like terribly much, if I am picking that up correctly. I'm gonna ban the Boneyard, um, kinda also for obvious reasons, I just tend not to really feel too confident on that map, so... Don't really want any interest in that. Now, the map pool this time only included, um, seven maps, and so we already know which five are gonna be played, but the order was picked by us. It'll be Firebase Curl first, then Kalosh, then Tight End Passage, then Torn Crater, and then the Shallows. I'd say something, you know, vague, like, here's to hoping we get, like, six, ga uh, <laughs> six games in this best of five. Like, all five of the games played or something, but I mean, yeah, it's me playing, so, you, you know, I know I know what happened. Uh, but I won't tell you. I shall keep it spoiler-free. Now, starting off game one here, I'm going to go for an Assault Ship push. Um, probe here going to see one of the production cruises. Might get killed here. Indeed, he will. That's a little unfortunate for A-game because he doesn't know that there's a second one, doesn't get, you know, total information from that, but he does know that I'm moving out with sand skimmers and stuff like that, probably expecting then that he's uh, going to have to put up some kind of a defense, but it shouldn't be too much of a commit unless some kind of tech comes out, so making a couple LAVs here, he wants to monitor the army, see, you know, if like a railgun pops out, if an assault ship pops out, that's, that's info he's going to want to have, but he doesn't have any information about this guy off here on the side, but I'm sure he's getting suspicious because I always do weird stuff, so... He probably has kind of an inkling. Game sounds too. How's that sound? <clears throat> he probably has an inkling something weird is up because he's playing against me. Um, <laughs> and I always do something weird. But my idea here is to kind of try and like not actually show that there's assault ships coming out of here. Um, and then even if he like sees this army, he just thinks it's sand skimmers and I'm going to go back and play eco or something. And then suddenly I'll come out from the side here with a bunch of assault ships and try to push him off of his main. That's the plan, um, but it is going to be foiled in some respect because A-game has seen this with an LAV. Ooh, I didn't realize this had happened. What, was it a magpie, Roby? <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try and fold up on my opponent now, but he does know about the assault ship there. He's got time to try to make a defense. So we have a turret coming down. That's kind of what you have to do, I think, in this scenario. The assault ship is on top of the turret, though, so is it going to go down is the question. I think it will. Probably ought to only get one volley off. So these salvagers are going to have to pull off of the base. This is such a here. Probably ought to push out too. I think there's definitely some damage that can be done by it, but... Just trying to get these salvagers if I can. It's probably better actually to defend myself though. I, I think this would have been better if I'd attacked the uh, the skimmers there. Or, those aren't, the LAVs, you know what I mean. But I am still going to be annoying. I'm going to pick off a logistics module here, which is always a little bit frustrating for the coalition player to deal with. Um, and he's gonna have to come in with his carrier try to kind of push me out here. That's interesting, that's interesting. I'll just up the desktop audio, uh, desktop audio. Yeah, tell me what you think about this, then. Probe gonna come back, and he wants to scout to see if the production cruises have fallen off. They have, so he gets that information, that's very good for him. Refinery mode's on the queue already, so he knows he needs to not follow up with too much defense instead follow up with some economy. 
Either that or see if he can go for some kind of a counterattack. I wonder if he's going to set down a... No, he's probably just here to set down a turret if he needs to, but... But he probably knows he doesn't have to. Um, this is something I've done many times. No surprise coming for me. Um, and, you know... Uh, how shall I say it? I, I Like, with that scouting information, I think A-game's not the kind of player who's going to overinvest into defense here. Now, I could go really mind gaming, like, pull back and let him see me with his probe... And then come back up, and then like attack him again. That'd be sick. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not thinking anything so woke. So that's weird. Like, how does this fight sound? Is it like coming across loud or no? Hmm. It sounds weird because on my on my computer it's still good, and I have the mix the same as it always has been. Let's try this. How's this sounding? This might be too loud from the game, but tell me what you think. Well, I said A-game either needs to expand or he needs to get damage done. Looks like he's going to go for the damage route because we've already teched our assault cruisers and we've got one coming out already. Too loud, you mean? By quite? Quite is very ambiguous, my friend. Uh, and then we have fighter and gunship fab coming out too. Oh, you mean quiet? I don't know what you mean, Roby. You, you, you gotta be specific. <laughs> Interceptor Fabrication is finishing for me now. That's gonna stack up nicely to Fighter and Gunship, but... Um... Uh, Roby, I don't know what that means! <laughs> you have to explain thine self. <laughs> you don't hear any difference when I adjust it. That's weird. Hold up. It's just not taking any desktop audio. Wait a second. I'll pause this here. I don't think it's taking any desktop audio at all, actually. Ah. Well, how's that? Did the music suddenly just turn on? <laughs> now it's loud. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, I see what happened here. That's just a, a rookie mistake. Sorry. Doesn't matter too much. Anyway, back to the game here. Um, yeah, so we have the assault cruiser out on the field already. So this is definitely going to uh, kind of bully around these assault ships, but I do have air coming, which can be helpful. I've got rail fab on the way too. This backstab of LAB is going to be a little nice here, actually. Um, the carrier is here. Can I reveal air against them? I feel like this was perhaps a mistake. I'm not sure exactly why I was doing this. Um, interceptors just don't do much damage. In fact, am I going to lose this interceptor? I better not. That'd be a very noob move. Oh gosh, what's it? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh my. Oh. Oh, what a choke, dude. Because now he knows that there's air in the air. <laughs> oh, that sounds weird. Now he knows that there's air. And I didn't get anything done with it. And I lost the unit. That seems a little, uh, dumb, doesn't it? <laughs> but, you know, that Assault Cruiser is coming up here now, so this is where I'm going to want the Interceptors for. We don't have that anti-air tech yet, of course. Assault Cruiser anti-air, pretty, um, pretty rare to see at all. Uh, I really like it in 3v3s, but it's kind of difficult to find in the- Oh, a Salvager went down there too. I feel like I could definitely have stopped that with a Soldier, but... A little tricky to find a use for a Assault Cruiser anti-air in 1v1, so... Uh, these interceptors should be able to um, clean that up, but it might hold me off my third base for a bit here too. So the uh, yeah, and again, imagine you know if I had three interceptors instead of two, right? And I also knew that this guy was there. I should have kind of been expecting that. A game, by the way, uh, he has strike fighters against interceptors. Normally, not you know the units that we would want to fight with, but he knows that he can take it if he uh, has the first shot. But pretty decent micro for me, I think here. Oh well, he's got a lot of strike fighters actually. Ooh. 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 Is this guy gonna get out of there with seven? Ooh. What's nice get out? Get out. Yeah, that's not really very good for an air reveal, is it? That's pretty messy, although. The thing is, on the back end of this, though, um, we, we are, you know, feeling okay because we know that there's no third base here. We are pressuring the second. In fact, this Sparker's taking a lot of damage. Um, 
And I didn't really expect that my opponent could really do much to, uh, to hurt me here either. I didn't realize this carrier was like literally right here. That's gonna be some problems for me as he kinda goes for a bit of a power push. I'm gonna move off now. But I should be able to kill this uh, support cruiser, I'm pretty sure. And if the air war goes on for much longer, I should be ahead in that regard because... Yeah, right, it's, it's, it's very all over the place, isn't it? Um, you know, we're, we're both just like smashing each other, kind of, you know, like you, you're holding me off my bases constantly. This assault cruiser still isn't dead, which is frustrating. Um, but you know, at the same time you're holding me off my main, I take out your support cruiser over there, you just got this one set up. And so, yeah, it's definitely like action is all over the place, you know. No, no time wasted, we're just like, we're just smashing each other to pieces here. Which is always pretty fun to see. Railgun Fabrication is finished, I believe I've already begun building those, because we got this Assault Cruiser up here on the high ground. I still haven't cleared it out, so that's gonna cause me some problems if I can't come up with a solution for it. If I use the air, we might have that same thing happen where the Strike Fighters come in and kind of capitalize on me, so... It's tricky here, but keep an eye on my- oh, yeah, okay, look, you may be right. You may be right, but... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, there's some context there, I'll talk about that in a second, but... Um, yeah, A-game is gonna have to push away here, though. He doesn't have any rails yet, uh, doesn't have a support cruiser here. He won't be able to make a power push, so I will be back onto my third base, or main base, that is. Um... <clears throat> and yeah, from this position, I guess it's kinda hard to say who's ahead. My, my eco is a little bit better solidified, but I think he still has kinda the air... Oh yeah, he definitely has the air advantage. He's only got one interceptor right now. Um... And he's got a lot of good field control here too, because the Assault Cruiser uh, really is difficult to deal with over on this side of the map. And at the same time, um, you know, his carrier makes for obviously kind of the same thing on his side. <clears throat> yeah, so the context there is that uh, I always have this huge CU float, and I didn't think it was because I wasn't producing units. I thought like, oh no, I was producing constantly, I just, I just had CUs building up, but uh, that's not true apparently. <laughs> I'll admit, I'll admit, that's definitely a mistake. <laughs> this game was a little bit messy for me in a couple of ways, but... We're moving in, I would say, to, like, the mid to late game, sort of. <clears throat> yeah, let's call it the mid game. Um, <clears throat> but I am ready to start going for extra uh, extractions here. I'm gonna try to mobilize my carrier to help me with the extraction. Now, one thing you'll notice as we move on in this game is that this carrier spends a lot of time, like, right here. Um, and Agen talked about this with me um, after the game ended, he was like, you know, I mean, shouldn't it be like there or like there? <laughs> you know what I mean? Not like in the middle of those two places. And I think it's just because, you know, I'm not a kind of main, you know what I mean? I don't totally understand their carriers yet. It's very slow and that, that just makes it difficult for me to, uh, yeah, well, in that case, he spends CUs on like skimmers, Roby is the idea. Because I should have like 25 sand skimmers running around the map, right? <laughs> but I just don't. That, that's, that's my problem here. But yeah, definitely it shows that I'm not a con of main. I don't totally know what to do with this carrier, so I think that's probably the biggest thing that I can improve on from this game, to be honest. I've seen it like three times now, so I've, <laughs> I've, I've definitely analyzed this one a bit here. Soul Cruiser will finally go down there, no chance for the Strike Fighters to intervene, and this time they are finally um, below in numbers. Um, and actually, if I look at this now, I really could do damage to this support cruiser here if I wanted to, but... I think I'm holding these guys because I'm expecting the uh, I'm expecting the air to launch somewhere and I want to be ready for it. Assault ships are going to push here on this uh, at the same time. Now again, the carrier should probably be here. I can do what A game did to me back to him, right? But um, we're not there. LV upgrades are coming out, by the way. Obviously, no sk uh, skimmer upgrades. I'm not even using them. Although I probably should be, but you know, that's what it is. Interceptor is fine, kind of a juicy um, angle to do some damage to these LAVs, but it's kind of underwhelming as usual. I probably shouldn't try that, but I was just thinking because they were so blobbed up, I'd be able to hurt them a lot. But you can see the main base here taking a lot of pressure now. LAVs getting caught by soul chips, they're not going to get much done, but this carrier is back in the hood now. And we got battle cruiser tech on the line, which is always pretty fun. For me, it's going to be siege. So, kind of that classic um, Kana versus Coalition thing that's been happening a lot in the world. And to your turret post is getting set up here too, that should... Score a kill! Oh, that was close. He nearly got out of there. That will score a kill. <clears throat> and again, this kind of carrier, just not really doing anything useful. Uh, could be over here denying, you know, this assault cruiser from making the pushback and whatever, but instead it's kind of coming back. I'm not really sure why. A game's carry is gonna have to back up, so I've got a bunch of rail guns here, so we're fine. Another dead spark. Oh, is it? Oh! Why, yes, yes it is. Classic magpie missing squad wipes left and right. Um. <laughs> Is that like the- oh! <clears throat> Is 
sorry, I just I never miss an opportunity for some self-adulation. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's just action all over the map. It's hard to keep track of all this. Support cruiser is with the carrier now, and we got another one coming out here to fill up the main, which has just been wiped. Um, that's gonna be good for a game. Once you get support cruisers with your carrier and it gets powered up, you you know you start being able to make that power push. And he's definitely been slowed down in that regard by the fact that he's been uh, losing support cruisers over on his bases. Again, carrier not really where it wants to be. If the carrier was here, this would be much better. But I could still um, do some barraging, I think, from here. You know, maybe like bup, 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 take some shots on that carrier. That's the sound it makes when it kind of carry shoots. You know. Bup, 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 bup. <laughs> Now we have uh, Battlecruiser Fabrication done, so A-Game is going to start producing some of those. Battlecruisers are spicy units, you know what I mean? Very often underwhelming- Oh, ooh, ooh. Very often underwhelming, but when they when they perform, they really perform. You know, you just can't stop the things, and they'll just, they'll just maul you to pieces. Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you mean, A-Game, right? Because, like, if this game was in vanilla, I think the Galzian player would just always have the advantage in this regard because we're moving around so much on the map or whatever. The tech choice is very stifled for both players, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's not really nearly so dynamic. <clears throat> I mean, this game in particular, I think, should really display pretty nicely, I think, how the mod um, just makes things spicy, you know what I mean? Things that just never work otherwise. But... You know, in the mod, you can get away with them, and it's it's cool. Little strike fighter, we're gonna go on here. Again, trying to capitalize on his dead uh, assault cruiser, but I don't think he it worked for him really. I hear a turret shooting, right? What's that? Oh yeah, over here. In mid. Oh, that's a nice turret. Wow. Because that just kind of starts to encroach a little bit, you know, on like the uh, on my position there. Like, how am I gonna get rid of this thing um, without pushing his carrier back too? So. Unless I can really make a committed push through this area, which it looks like I'm planning on right now. I won't just be able to send a couple of, you know, assault troops over there and deal with it like that. First battlecruiser's out, here's the big reveal. Um, base runner just came out like, nope, I'm out of there. He's a pretty speedy guy too, he's got plus 10 speed for shooting down some, uh... Oh, nice, Cameron. I've got a lot of friends named Cameron. Anyway, this battlecruiser does present some serious issues, so I've got a couple rails here, but... You really need something to deal with the battlecruiser. You can't just have it be this close to your base and everything's okay. This is like a big problem. This would be in vanilla too, to be honest, but um, it's much harder to get to the battlecruiser, so we probably wouldn't have seen it. Here come the strike fighters. Robert. <laughs> I think he spelled Robert wrong, dude. This guy is getting freaking vetted. Wow, that's cool. Apparently at Elder, he could sh survive like an extra shot from like missiles, which is pretty spicy. The thing is, these LAVs actually do some pretty good anti-air. Now, we've seen them get smashed when they try to fill that role. But we've also seen them perform nicely, so... Uh... I think this is a pretty nice push here, this, this idea. Smoke gets popped on the VC, that's obviously pretty wise. It's gonna go down here, but it probably should still die to the interceptors. Meanwhile, push is going on on this side, of course. There's this action everywhere. A couple railguns getting picked down here. This guy gonna have to dock, I'm sure he can't come back in. And this battle cruiser left at about 226 health. Over on this side, um, what is doing those missiles? Is that the carrier? No, no, it's the strike fighter, so yeah. <laughs> so a whole lot of railguns went down there. I gotta say, one thing I should have done this game that would have been pretty easy is just, you know, tech into anti-air of some kind, right? Get missile ships or something. Yeah, I can set it down and just uh that didn't take very long. You know, get missile ships or something, don't just rely on the air-based anti-air, because once I use it somewhere, he just comes in and just punishes me so hard. So even though strike fighters will lose in the anti-air fight, he's still kind of winning in it, you know what I mean? Through my own uh, incompetence, I suppose. Now this, I didn't realize until I was... <laughs> yeah, I can take your feedback real time, it's cool, huh? This I didn't realize until watching the replay after the game, but this battlecruiser is still alive. And this, I think, actually turned out to be really impactful later on in the game, so this guy should definitely be dead. Um, one more shot from an interceptor, one more shot from a railgun. Honestly, assault ships could probably kill him at this point, but he's actually gonna get out. Um, no bueno. I'll put it that way. One of my favorite things to do is go honor guard cruisers <clears throat> and siege cruisers. I wonder if I'll go for that. I can't remember if I do in this game. But that's just always been a very strong tech choice. It's difficult to beat it. But these BCs have... Uh, he's already, I think, paid for himself because he didn't die. If he had died, I don't think the push would have been worth it, but... 
Yeah, there's no way, there's no way this base runner gets out, right? He's obviously got to go down now. Ooh, it's close, actually, but no. He shouldn't go down. Calculated. That actually was calculated, to be fair. <laughs> Normally we say that as a joke, but I was actually thinking, like, how long can I wait before this gets out? A lot of damage getting dumped on the Coalition Carrier, but I'm out of missiles now, so the air again is going to be able to come in and do whatever it wants. Once again, you know, missile ships with my army would be really good here. Um, big rail force from A-game is actually moving out through the middle of the map now, but he doesn't have any upgrades for them at all. Oh, jeez. That's a little nasty. But he does have Power Reserve 5, and that, I think, is going to be more impactful in the long run, because, of course, that's when you get the nuke, and it's going to be launched now. Up on these rail guns, this is going to be a pretty good hit. Nothing like game ending, but it's already, ooh, you know, pretty bad for me. But my biggest railgun force was actually here. Um, so I feel somewhat okay about that. Oh, but I don't feel okay about this. LED's gonna jump up on top, and they have both the damage upgrades. So they're just gonna make absolute mince me to these railguns. So it looks like on both sides of the map now, I'm just kind of folding. Everything just getting killed at the same time. You know I love cruise missiles, right? <laughs> just wait till we get to upper bracket of Kara Cup 13. <laughs> you, you will really enjoy that. Um, <laughs> no spoilers, but... <clears throat> An A-game now, feeling ready to make a pretty concentrated power pusher. Three support cruisers with a battle cruiser. He's got his carrier here, he's producing railguns, so... This is gonna be tricky to hold now. Um, both the cruise missile hitting, yeah, that did a lot, but also these LAVs getting the jump on those railguns. That did a lot, um, in terms of, you know, opening this up and allowing him to do damage here, but... There's no ground base anti-air for him either, interestingly, so... I didn't realize that until just now. But yeah, that means that my interceptors are kind of free to do what they want in some ways. This one maybe gonna die? No, he'll get out. Yeah, yeah, I know you like them when you use them. How do you like them when they're used on you, huh? That's the big thing. <laughs> Battlecruiser coming in here on the side. Um, this is a nice position for him because of the dune there. He can kind of jump up on the siege cruiser, but I think I've got this one more or less covered. Barrage is coming down and doing a pretty good job of zoning the railguns. If they try to push through this, they're all just kind of going to die. It kind of looks like he's just trying to push through them anyway. Um, this battlecruiser will go down to the rails here. Down he goes. I think actually the siege cruiser taking the kill for that one. And it looks like A-game is going to have to back away here. I think it was a good idea. It was a good plan until now, <laughs> like they say in Pirates of the Caribbean. It was a good idea, but it didn't quite work out for him, and now he's still got a bit of a vulnerability over on this side, but check this out. See this guy? He should be dead. He should be dead. And imagine if he was, right? Like, what would A-game do to stop this? Is there anything he could do? I don't think so, right? He just, he just doesn't have anything there. He'll launch the Strike Fighters, I'll launch the Interceptors, and I can win that fight. So, if I would have just, like, killed this battle cruiser, I probably would be up in his base now, just doing whatever I wanted, you know what I mean? Feels bad, man. Feels bad. The other thing I gotta watch out for, of course, is we do know that that cruise missile is ready, so... <clears throat> and that's gonna be really, uh, real problems here, too, because, um... How do I explain? The way that I can push A-game off of this location is by getting up on this high ground here, because he's got a big high ground there, like, you see this? I'm, not, I'm never gonna be able to take this fight. So I need to get up onto the high ground there, but then once I do, I'm all clustered up and he can just boom. You nuke me to death, right? Here I am, by the way, with the assault ships, but the battle cruiser is in tow. He's gonna be fine here. Um, takes him out. So again, big choke. <laughs> Didn't have to go that way, but it did. Here's the nuke now. Just like I said, once I get up on this high ground now, you know, nuke can zone me out there. Or just kill me. That works too. <laughs> and now I've got these two siege cruisers, but they're feeling a little, uh awkward here, you know what I mean? Like, what are they supposed to do? This is good for me, I'm gonna kill a bunch of, uh, interceptors, I think. <clears throat> and the barrage is really surprisingly good here, too. <clears throat> so I take a sip on my drink before my voice explodes. But th this number of support cruisers can heal up these rails pretty quickly as well. Maybe some more cruise missiles from this kind of carrier, I could, you know, get rid of these guys, but... But I mean, this is a real struggle. <laughs> I'm sure you can tell, neither of us want to give this up. We, we are fighting the bitter end. This is probably a mistake, having my rails so close. They should just get up here onto the high ground, where they can fight the rails better if, they, if the fight does happen. And they can, you know, do damage against that carrier. And then what I should do with these siege cruisers too, is probably just get them a little bit, you know, back in cover, away from this BC for sure. 
Wait for both of their barrages to be ready, and then barrage on the uh, the rails at the same time. Uh, I did not, though. I, I don't usually get that tech as fun F. I don't usually see the need for it. Because you're right, like, I'd have more range to hit on railguns and stuff. The railguns are so much further away from me all the time that I usually just don't think it's worth it. It's an expensive tech, but it's really expensive in time, too. Like, 110 seconds is crazy. Here comes that double barrage I was talking about. So this is gonna be good, right? We'll probably kill all these railguns that are here. But again, doing a pretty good job actually of splitting these. So there's four back on the carrier, four over here. These four go down, but the other four won't. This guy might die. He needs to back away really badly. Ooh. Now get over the dune. You can't just back away, I don't think. <laughs> I'm telling me what I should have done last time. And here, here's this battle cruiser too, which again ought to be dead. But now he's gonna start putting on some serious damage. This siege cruiser is so low, I can't believe he's still alive. This carrier just laying down missiles, but um that can't you know, that can't win a game that you've already lost, you know what I mean? I think in this scenario it's kinda of spiraling out of control. His army's getting bigger and bigger and I just don't have an answer for it. It's just like a battle cruiser chilling out in my uh, my resource line too. That's that's never what you want to see. And this carrier is very powered up. Honestly, I think it on its own could probably beat my army at this point. A game probably assumes I have more power reserves than I do, but I haven't even researched one. I, I didn't invest into that this game. All my power is just coming from artifacts. But the barrage is flung out on the map, but that one is going to miss, and at, at this point I believe it's pretty obvious who's going to win this game. Pushed off my second, my third's been cleared out by that BC. You know, a little tempted to backstab, but... What are you really going to get done with that? And at that moment I choose to surrender. And I've got to say, I think this battle cruiser literally won a game the game. Um, it's just too bad that they died. But if I had killed that, right, then, you know, I would have been able to just wipe his eco over here. Uh, if I had killed it, it wouldn't be able to come in and hit on my third and on the back. And yeah, I, I will agree, this was one of the best games I had ever played. I was really sad to lose it because it was so good, you know. When, when there are games that are this good, you naturally want to win them. But man, I, I just really enjoyed playing it. I think, um, yeah, I think it was just awesome. Let's move on with the rest of the series, though. I can see why Magpie cast this one. He cast this one before he started uh, doing, like, the finals, right? Just kind of as, like, a random, like, hey, I'm back cast, right? He, yeah, he picked a good game to cast. <laughs> um. Oh. <laughs> What do you know? <laughs> Looks like Bozo Cow's been throwing away units again. <laughs> That's not really too surprising, is it? <laughs> I should always have the units lost tab open when I'm casting myself, you know, but I'm too afraid. I don't I don't want to see. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. Are you asking, like, how do I have so many units produced? Because I don't know either. Well, here's the thing, A-game. I will still contest this, okay? Um, if you look at the end of the game, I didn't have any CUs left, right? Yeah, and I chunked a bunch of those LAVs sometime, uh, a couple times, too. But you use a lot of cruisers, right, which don't die as often, so... I, I threw away a lot of assault ships, though, I think. Anyway. Um, but yeah, at the end of the game, did you see how many CUs I had? Like, 200, right? So I did actually use that entire bank there. Just saying, okay? I'm just saying. I think the CU float is justifiable in some respect, alright, because when you move on to a late game like that, you just have more to work with. Um, and if I just killed that battle cruiser, you know, <laughs> I keep thinking about it. Um, you know, who knows, maybe I, maybe I could have won that game, so. And, you know, the CU float would have actually been part of it. Oh well. Yeah, yeah, you're right, but... You know, one thing I could have done was kind of made them in secret, if you will, you know what I mean? Just like whenever I have free production cues, just like send them off to some corner of the map and then just randomly pop in and be like, So, you know I have sand skimmers, right? <laughs> but <laughs> that would have been interesting. It's gonna be ref mode first for me. This is a total feint right here. I'm trying to get my opponent to believe that I want to do some kind of early aggression and then I'll fall back. This could be tricky, though, because we already have AV fabrication on the queue. Um, honestly, like, this would not work in vanilla for obvious reasons, but... I don't really think it works in patch either. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going for this game. 
uh, what, what do you mean by that frosty? Is that like later on in the game they become more valuable? Is that what you mean? Or like they don't get value, they don't accrue value while they're just sitting in your bank? Because I can see that going either way. They're kind of both true, right? Anyway, refiner mode is done, so that's nice for me. But we are going to have AVs on the queue already, and it's about like a 40 second travel time to get down here. It's a, uh, what is it, 40, no, 55 second um, research time to get rails, so... That's going to be a bit rough here. Um, this is going to have to be like the hold of my life. I was, yeah. I was trying to fake you out by making you believe that I was going for some kind of early aggression and then just fall back and do refinery mode, right? Because of the prevalence of like one PC assault ship builds and stuff like that. The other reason was because I didn't know what faction you were and this was one way to scout it. Um, yeah, and actually, that's another thing I should mention. Um, wait, no, no, sorry. That's a lie. This is a game we're talking about, so of course he told me what faction he was playing, didn't he? Otherwise, this actually would have been pretty justifiable, because if I did this against Galzian or something, I could probably get away with it, but... Uh, but yeah, you know, we got AVs come down the field already. Probably Armor 1 can be researched right about now, so that it hits, like, right when they're, um, arriving. And yeah, we need rails, like, yesterday, pretty much. Um, the, the fast expand for Galzian without getting tech first is just very risky. I keep trying to make it work or something, but... <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good to know actually. I'll probably stop doing that then. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? I can't even remember now. Yeah, so rails just need to be out like yesterday. I think if you're gonna go fast expand as Galaxian, you gotta get the tech first. Especially in vanilla. You can see that it's true in patch 2. I'm gonna kinda throw, um... I'm gonna kinda, th uh, like, try to kill the... <laughs> Did I just say I'm gonna kind of throw and then like zone out? I'm gonna try to kill these AVs with like sand skimmers, but that's not really gonna work. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna throw... Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> but I mean, I kind of am, you know what I mean? Uh, these sand skimmers are not gonna help me here. They need to be doing something else, or at least just not dying, you know what I mean? Um, we finally have assault railguns coming out now. But this is a very aggressive move out for me as well. Um, this is one of those things that I kind of like, go after the game is finished, because you just shouldn't do this. I'm, I'm moving out assuming that like, oh, I have a short rail guns now, I'm just going to have to back away, but that's not the tr uh, not the case. The AVs can probably kill these. LAVs going to come in and they're definitely going to be able to kill these. Um, this is just, this is getting worse and worse and worse by minute. So, this hold is not uh, ideal. <laughs> I think that's pretty safe to say. And refinery mode, not really paying off for me here at all. A game with some really nice smoke micro, by the way. He's totally um, juking me here. Like I'm having a very hard time killing off these assault ships, and these assault rails are going down here too. I, I guess I think that these are like hero, you know, vanilla assault rails or something, but they're not. So yeah, perhaps you can see just how much I'm struggling here. <laughs> it's it's not going so well. Um, but so I take stock of the situation now. Okay, well. I'm, I'm clearly losing this game, but maybe there's a way to win it back, huh? Hey, my opponent's probably on two base, so what can I do that could maybe swing this back in my favor? I can't probably expand. I should probably go for some kind of like a rush build or something. <laughs> you wouldn't really call this a rush anymore. Although maybe I am going to try to expand because I already have refinery mode. I don't know, when you get in a situation like this, it's hard to make the right call. I don't know if there really even is one. Looks like I am going to try to expand, so this production cruiser heads over to the third. I can do kind of like a... A pop up to three expansion type of thing is, that Gelsian can do, you know what I mean? But A game's already gonna be on three, and he'll have that second base mining for a long time. So this probably, this probably is gonna be pretty bad here. I'm also gonna have to tech missile ship fabrication because you never know if the air is gonna come out. Um, in this case, it's gonna be rails from A game, but uh, this is this is nasty times. This is not really how you want the game to start. <laughs> Assault Railguns is trying to jockey for some position out here on the side of the map. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Because I have Rail Fab already, I have two PCs, I might as well push out and see if I can make it work, right? I don't know, no. I don't know. Because you do have Rail Tech already, um, you're on two base, so you're going to have a much bigger economy. I can come in here with the production cruisers and then try and push you off your main, but it's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky. Yeah, I see you have Rail Tech already. 
The other, well, if I could keep it hidden though, like cause this AV pulled back anyway. If the assault ship, uh, if the assault railguns push out here, pushing back a little bit more, and then you're like, okay, well, I, I better start making rails to deal with it. And then suddenly two PCs come out that have heavy rails in tow. You're gonna be like, oh, and maybe maybe something can be done there. You know what I mean? But yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I if, if I if I see two production cruisers while I'm playing Coalition, I just insta tech rails. Usually. You know, we were testing that, uh, I think that was yesterday, and I was like, no, I'm sure you can do AVs here, and then eventually I was like, yeah, okay, so you can't do AVs here. <laughs> These LAVs are out for blood, by the way. Holy moly. Um, I attempted a little barrage there, but I'm not sure if that was my frame rate acting up or if I just missed, <laughs> but... These LAVs are kind of... Yeah, they have no answer on the field just yet. The assault, I mean, the assault railguns are there, but there's just so many of them. I guess I didn't expect this somehow? They're just gonna go straight for production cruiser or are they gonna kill selves first? Looks like they're gonna go for those salvagers first. That's brutal. That is a lot of LAVs. Um, again, turning, you know, a bit from bad to worst. No, I would agree, actually, because over here, you can do a lot of damage now, because on this base, we've only got two assault rails here, too. Um, and I, I get the idea, you know, it's, it's okay to be, like, um, safer than, like, you know, better safe than sorry, right? But, uh, I think because you knew how much eco damage you did to me before, you should probably assume that there's nothing coming out here. Um, I guess it's just kind of hard to get a feel for, but I, I, when I look at this army, I think, yeah, this is someone who's just gotten up on the free base. I don't think... Um, oh, he must be floating a lot or something, you know, that, or maybe he's, like, teching to something. I don't think that. I think, yeah, this guy's just gotten on the free base, so. Especially when you saw the missile ships, right? So, yeah, I think he could have done a lot more damage. He could have pushed me off the third, maybe even killed the P uh, the PC there, which would have been really crippling. But, um, I was definitely counting my lucky stars when he left there. I was like, oh, whew. Uh, because, <laughs> I mean, I was just totally bluffing it. Although, you never know. That's the thing, you know? Bozo Cow and his mind games, you never know exactly what he's planning, so... <laughs> I guess, I guess, you know, you are still ahead in this position, you're gonna stay ahead here, maybe that's okay, but... I would've just, I would've just stuck in there, but then again, it's, it's me, so I like to throw away units a lot, so that's not really too much of a surprise, is it? Yeah. You know, we always used to criticize you in the Artifact Cup days, like, you could just push out here, you know, but it's like, yeah, he doesn't know that, though. I mean, we know it, but he doesn't. Um, and you won, like, almost all those tournaments anyway, so I, I think, you know, you're probably on to something. Well, this is a tricky situation for me, alright? I mean, not to mention the fact there's AAVs coming over here, but, um... These railguns are really a good counter to my assault rails, and the... The LAVs are here too, and the assault rails only counter them if they can get into position to do it, you know what I mean? And with these rails here, it's really difficult to do that. I think rails and LAVs really are just the shutdown in, in a lot of ways to assault rails, because if you start making rail no, uh, like heavy rails, then you lose the LAV, uh, like the anti-LAV superiority numbers, you know what I mean? And then they can just kind of run over you. Um, but if you stick on the assault rails, you know, you're not going to make it through there either, so... I need to transition into sand skimmers and rails, but that's just tricky to do because he's got the LAV lead on me. You can see I'm, I'm planning that though, that's where I'm heading. But no damage upgrades coming out just yet, even though I got on top of these guys, this guy only took like, you know, a third of his health, so... He's completely fine, and I'm still kind of behind here. I don't think it would work in patch, uh, in vanilla necessarily, because the soul rails just like really chew up LAVs, but... And this is a nice touch here as well. Oh, oh, it's a double nice touch. <laughs> nice plus plus. Well, he's got a support cruiser gonna come over here to, you know, support his army, which is something we don't see happen as often, I think, as we should. Because the idea, uh, the ability to have frontline healing just makes the Coalition army so much stronger. Um, that's one reason why carrier power builds are so effective, is because the carrier can also heal your army. Um, but, you know, support cruisers can do the same thing, but better, I, I think, because... You know, they don't have to have the power in weapons, they don't have power at all. Um, and if you have your carrier and support cruisers with your army, now you're really looking sharp. These LAVs just still vastly superior to my skimmers there. Uh, last upgrade is coming out for AD. Um, that's when it starts getting real. I don't think I have even Railgun Armor 2, yeah, look at that, so... These LAVs just gonna charge in here, and I think they can kill everything that's here if they want it. 
again, this wouldn't work in vanilla. Eh, maybe it would, but it wouldn't work very well. <laughs> but in patch, you know, those LEDs, they're they're nasty boys. <laughs> again, I think A-game probably ought to stick around a bit longer. This time I feel he ought to really have known that. But But I mean, what am I really to do here? My army is just getting smaller and smaller every engagement I have with him. Um Pretty soon, that's going to be unsustainable. I come in here for the back step, though. Which is good, because these assault railguns get up on top of their rails, which is where they can really start, um, you know, trading effectively against uh, against them. But still, like, the assault railgun numbers aren't even as big as the rails, so... Yeah, exactly, right? I mean, even if I could have, you know, killed everything and lost that number of units, it still wouldn't necessarily be worth it. And here, you know... Yeah, I still don't. I, I didn't even kill them, so I mean, it, it's it's not good. Oh, what do you mean by that, Aegon? You're threatening the game leader position, like, to win or to lose? Because, uh, are you talking about, like, this moment over here where I said you should have just, like, stuck in and killed the, the assault railguns? Yeah, yeah, but see, that's what I was doing. I was trying to, like, pop in there and kill off the, uh, kill off the rails, but I mean, like, I couldn't even do it. And if I had been able to do it, it still wouldn't necessarily have even been worth it, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, and we got, you know, everyone's favorite unit coming out here, too. It's going to be an Assault Cruiser. I say everyone's favorite unit because I know a lot of people feel like it should even be removed from the game, which I think is just nonsense. Desperado! I'm just, I'm going for it here. Full send. Because, you know, I, I gotta get something done. I, I can tell that this is not working out. But, um, assault Cruiser's in the hood. ALMs are going to slow me down a lot here. Um, LAVs are on the chase, too. This is probably not going to go anywhere. <laughs> well, in some ways, yes, right? <laughs> but in many ways, no. <laughs> in this in this particular application, no, they have not. <laughs> Sublime Rails is doing their things. This is the one tin photo hat that I will accept. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and at that point, the entire army is pretty much gone for me. I'm gonna start tech switching because you know. I mean, I'm in the loop with what's going on in this game. But really, I could surrender at this point, and it would be over. This game is definitely in the bag for a game. We're just gonna speed it up a little bit here. We've even got the, the nasty tech missile barrage, which is a nice touch. And perhaps that is what it is that triggered me to realize, like, um, hmm, I seem to be losing. <laughs> I'm not sure when this started. <laughs> and that will be the game. Let's move on to game three, shall we? Of course, this is a best of five, which is always spicy. I actually mentioned this in another stream recently, but should we be doing best of fives for bracket play two? And I think most people are saying yes. So I think in Curry Cup 14 we'll do it. But put your input. Tell me what you think. Obviously I'd like to know. Yeah, although I'm thinking Curry Cup 14 should probably come first because we haven't really got much uh, testing for the patch yet, right? We'll see about that. We, we can talk to each other about that in DMs, probably. It's fine. <laughs> you mean the patch is fine? I guess you have been getting a bit of testing in. <clears throat> map 3 going to be a tight end passage. Not really my favorite map, but I've got an idea. I've got a spicy idea. I talked about this in an earlier video, didn't it? Didn't I? I think I shouldn't be doing this because it like actually slows down your salvage. Okay, we can probably just go ahead and start it then. It'll probably happen just right after KC thirteen finishes then, huh? I'll go ahead and organize that today then, probably after uh, after the stream. Anyway, I've got an idea. I have got an idea. I don't know what faction my opponent is, he's going to declare Galveston right about now, but I was going to do this regardless of what faction he was. This is... Whoa! Hiccups. This is better for me anyway, though. Um, and it's actually going to be 2 PC from A game as well, that's interesting. But um, my plan is that on this map, I don't know why, but there's like this gigantic space out here. Do you see this? Like, this is all playable area. I think maybe it's because it's used in like the 2v2 map or something. Same thing over on this side, you know. And my idea was, okay, well, I can actually um, do a two PC rail rush here then, and if I can, if I can be kind of ninja about it, he's gonna have no idea it's coming, and I'll just like smash him to pieces. 
That was my plan. Um, one thing that I love the most is ninja PCs. They're just, they're nasty things. Gets Galaxian such versatility in the opener, and in, in a lot of ways I'm, I'm always a little worried it's going to turn out to be kind of broken, but fortunately it hasn't really seemed to be. Um, we've had some great games with people who 2 PC rush like Sparrow and whatever, and they're just, they're a lot of fun to watch. A-game's gone for that second production cruiser, no tech choice just yet. I wonder if he's going to go for it, if it'll be refinery mode or something into like a fast expand, but... Oh, you play games versus Sparrow? Yes. Okay, send me the replay then. Uh, I'll just go ahead and stick it on the end of the stream. Because that, I want to see. But yeah, have we got a tech coming out here? The thing is, he may just go for like a couple skimmers to be safe and then up into refinery mode with 2 PC. I think that's a do like viable build, right? Right? I'm not really sure. But, I mean, I think it, it would be viable- yeah, okay, that's what he's gonna do. It'd be viable because it gives you a chance to defend. You can get a tech if your opponent is coming at you, and then you can get one of these. Um, and you'll have two production cruisers when you have that tech. Uh, and if not, you know, you have a very easy springboard up onto three base, which is... You know, very versatile, very, um, flexible build there. Really trying to keep this guy hidden, that sand skimmer nearly saw him. Um, I was a little worried about that, I was like, no, 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 no. My whole strategy here really is going to revolve around not being seen because I'm going to do this so slow because I'm trying to come in from the back end, come in from here, that if he sees me before I get there, it's not going to work. So I'm only producing skimmers off of one PC here. Yeah, you thought. <laughs> Think again, man. <laughs> Bozo Cow is not so easily readable. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing about the 2PC, like, refinery mode build, right, is that you, you're you reasonably sure that there's no attack coming, and so, like, okay, well, I can just back off and play eco, right? But it is not so. Um, but yeah, I'm only producing sand skimmers off of one production cruiser. That's important because I don't want to give him any tells at all that I've got two of these guys. I could maybe also make skimmers over here and then just, like, leave them there so that I can pop them in once I need them, but... The danger here, of course, is that I could fall behind in the skimmer count, but I'm not yet, I don't think. We can check the units tab, it'll tell us. <laughs> uh, yes, I have, actually. Oh, oh dear. This is just, this is a little tricky here, because I need to... First off, I need to clear out the scanner, probably. That has to die. But I need to somehow take the skimmer fights without losing them, but I can't win them, because he's got a lot more units than me. And then when I have my rails here, I need to, uh, you know, keep this production cruiser safe using the, um, the sand skimmers, too. I think the scanner caught a little blip of that production cruiser, which is probably a little bit of a mistake for me. Yeah, see, this is the kind of fight I don't really want to commit to, but he sees a production cruiser there, so he's going to be thinking, what's going on here? And then he sees a railgun shoot at him, and now he's going to be thinking, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> this is when the alarm bells start going off, um, and in just a moment, I think it'll be revealed to him that I've actually got two production cruisers here. I'm in behind his base now, and he still has railgun tech on the way, it's not yet finished. Which means I can start making assault railguns, which are going to be able to hold the line uh, against these sand skimmers. And I should be able to... If you just group the PCs and jump up... Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. I was kind of... Just kind of banking on that not working. Well, remember though, I do have three heavy rails that are on high ground though. I think if the PCs come up, they could easily die to that, maybe. Uh, yeah, this is actually a lot of skimmers, well... I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. Instead, though, A-game is going to choose to back away here. Um, he's got refinery mode, so he can hold on these two bases. Oh yeah, like put them like right there or something. Yeah, you know, that probably works pretty well. Heavy railguns are starting to hit on this carry, it's got to leave. Ah, I see, I see. But I can keep up like almost constant production here and... I guess two, like these two bases have more uh, RUs, but they don't have more CUs, so you're actually not going to be able to win a fight like that, I don't think. If I have the production jump on you and I have two PC as well, I don't think you're going to be able to do it by having the two secondary bases. They're not going to get enough CUs for you. In fact, I'm going to start taking Railgun Armor here too. I really just don't want to, you know, choke or anything and like lose them to these sand skimmers, so just making sure they have enough armor is always safe. Apparently there's an A-game throw coming up. I'm excited to see that. Now I could get really extra and start like uh, building base running or something, but that's not on the queue just yet. The other thing I could do, I've actually got the money for it, is like get refinery mode. Which would be really funny, because then you know, I'd start like mining off my opponent's uh, third. 
Yeah, I think you're trying to get vision for like heavy rails to do. Well, yeah, you killed the missile rail there, but <laughs> it's probably not going to work here. My heavy rails do have high ground from this location too, which is kind of the really nasty thing about this this particular build on the on the what do you call it on tight end passage, is that not only can I do this because of the you know immense amount of space behind my opponent's base, but I can do it with high ground. Production cruiser starts getting a little low, but he's going to be okay. He'll get out of there. The dust kind of settles, and A-game is on two base now instead of three. And those two bases, like I said, don't have any more CUs than his main would. And so in this scenario, I think I'm actually winning pretty handily. I've also got the long-distance economy. Yeah, you should be. Um, this is pretty much pretty much not where, much where you want to be. I'll put it that way. This is pretty much not where you want to be. <laughs> His carrier's in a really nice position here, um, kind of keeping it on the side of that hill there so that, you know, the, the railguns, if they, like, want to attack it, they have to get right up next to it. That's definitely what you want to do. But I just need to be careful with my unit control here, and I should be completely fine. So naturally, I dive in there and, you know, just try to get all up into the thin of things. Probably not what's meant by, you know, being careful. Take the... Oh! With the rails or with the, uh... Like, take this hill right here. Yeah, that could probably be good. Well, this is a bit of a... A bit of a throwaway of sand scammers, but it's gonna be kind of okay, also. Um, I just need to make sure that I keep committing skin, uh, you know, building skimmers right here so that I have, like, numbers to deal with them. If you look at A-Games Force, he's got not, uh, six of them right now, and I have five. And I really want to get this production cruiser, so I start going for it. I mean, I'm, I'm going for it. I'm, like, very committed here. But this right here, this is a bit of a throw, because even if I do get it, the thing that I'm not thinking about that really should have been in the back of my head is like, hold up, he's got like nine skims now and I have like five heavy rail guns. <laughs> so I've kind of just, um, like right there, that was definitely a big throw. I got this thing down to half, that's fine, I push him off the base, but then chasing him after with the skimmers is really bad. Suddenly, A-game has actually got the sand skimmer force to fight me back here. And, uh... That's not good, as you can imagine. This is what I always call the uh, the meat grinder, right? When you get um, when you get skimmers up on top of you and they have more numbers, and then you just you know every time you produce a sand skimmer, he just dies instantly. And your opponent's force is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and yours is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and eventually you will die that way. What a choke, man! <laughs> this is a pretty typical uh, bozo throw, as we would say. <laughs> Because this game was going just fine, you know what I mean? Rails should have been up here, um, just kind of chilling out. Sand's gonna stay there too. We just pushed you off of your second view. We just pushed A game off of the second. Uh, it's not gonna be long before his third has to capitulate too, and at that point he has no mining bases, which is usually not where you want to be. And that should have been the game, but instead, you know, a typical bozo throw comes out. Uh, we've seen that before. And that should be pretty much all she wrote for me. It's going to be very difficult to find a way back into this game if it's even possible at all. I do stick onto it because this is the last match. This is the ace match, you know, you never want to... You never want to leave those until you know it's over, but... We'll just go ahead and fast forward here. Not really too much left to see. Thanks. Yeah, no, I think my opener was like... As A-Game said, maybe it could have worked if he just jumped his PCs on top of me, but I don't think so. I think I still would have had it. Um, you gotta get inventive when you're playing against this guy, he's a slippery one. Kind of a shame for me, I, I know I definitely could have had this game, and maybe that was my window back into the series, but, uh, alas. A-Game Aix will indeed be crowned the victor of J Jiraki Cup number two. As his units turn invisible for a second, that was a little weird. Um, it was a great tournament, I liked it. Lots of 2-0s, the 3-0 in the finals, which, you know, like we said, is a little bit unfortunate, but it was good. I think the patch is in a good state. There were some things here that, you know, we, we found some bugs, we found some things that maybe were a bit exploitable, but, uh, Jiraki Cup 3 should be even better. I'm excited for it. Hope you guys are too, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.